Okay, the day that I've been waiting for, <laughs> I saw the movie The Black Panther uh, yesterday. It was it was epic. You know, uh, the cinematography, all of that, the story, the cast, all elegant, the costuming, all good. But we have to uh, understand those times that we are being distracted from important things that we need to see. Like John Henry Clark said, we, we have to realize that we have no friends on this planet. And as long as the movie industry is controlled by the aberrant man, believe me, there is nothing that is going to come out from that industry that makes it to mainstream, that has not been tampered with. Again, the epic was breathtaking. The cinematography, all of the bells and the whistles and the colors and our people represented, all that stuff is good. That is the low-hanging fruit. That is the bait to draw you in. But there is something a little bit more insidious that is going on there. When Nasik and I talked earlier, you know, I told him, and I used this term from the scriptures, there is death in the pot. There is death in the pot. We used to be able to have this ability to determine. And I see, like the father says, our, our tongue used to be intelligent. Right. And all, as well as all of our senses used to be intelligent. But when you look on Facebook, and I've been on there and I've been seeing the comments and the, the posts that people are putting on there, both pro and con, but they're missing the mark because our people are destroyed, not for lack of opinions, because that's what all that is. Our people mm -hmm. are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They do not know what a comic book is. They do not know what stereotyping is. They do not know our ancient rituals and when to recognize when they've been weaponized and you and, and are being used against us. So my passion is for my people, not for a movie. I don't know those people that made the movie. I can't say because simply because there are a lot of black people there that they are all my people and were and, and that they are concerned about the welfare of my people or that they are in, even informed as to what it is that they are doing and participating in. So we cannot be naive. We cannot assume. We must look at things with, from a divine perspective at all times. It's okay to be uh, uh, entertained, but I, but now say I can only be entertained for so long. And I know when I'm being distracted. And I'll tell you, I got through about 20 minutes of the movie. I went with my youngest daughter. I got through about 20 minutes with the, you know, uh, in, into the movie. But as the plot moved, I recognized what the plot was. And we must understand what a mono myth is. All a mono myth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna say it again. Write it down. Mono myth. There is when, when you, when, when you're talking about sci-fi and horror and supernatural stories, Star Wars. Um, name another one. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, all mm -hmm. of the Marvel uh, comic book characters. There is an underlying story an underlying template that they all follow that was developed from the story of Osiris and Set. 
As a matter of fact, the Jesus narrative is based on that particular story. And we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going, going to give you all the basics that combine to make up an epic like Black Panther. And you'll be able to distinguish for yourselves either what I'm saying was in the movie or it was not in the movie. All right? It's going to be that simple. But these things existed before there was anything called a comic book, anything called a motion picture or television show, and definitely anything called a Black Panther movie. This is just basic what we're talking about. So the question is not whether I like the movie or not. The question is, did I understand what I saw? Because liking mm -hmm. it or not, that, that I'm forming an opinion based on what? Dualism. Was it good or was it evil? Was it enjoyable or was it not enjoyable? Was it, was, was it a nice movie or was it a bad movie? Not here to determine that. We're going to break this thing down and decode it, and then everyone will uh, draw their own conclusions from it. All right? Let's begin. We're going to start actually where we left off with Nasik's great exposition. I'm talking about it was a brilliant exposition on Adam and Kava. And what was brought out, family, was that was this idea of dualism being represented or being symbolized as the two brothers or two twins more specifically and what nasi told us and uh it was a brilliant catch nasi that cain and abel once you understand the context of the language in that narrative you understand very clearly that cain and abel were twins exactly like Esau and Jacob. So all through the scriptures, what that does is set the template of these two diverse types that would exist when, until the end, the dualism represents the flaw in humanity. The dualism represents the flaw in humanity. And we understand that the dualism refers directly to two genetic types that are in man, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that they are represented by these two terms, dominant traits, types, and behavior, and what? Recessive traits, types, and behavior. So we understand that the narrative of the Bible, as well as the overall narrative of history, especially as it relates to melanated people, is the correction or the healing or the elimination, the eradication of what? The flaw to where what? Everything becomes one. Everything goes back to a singularity. Everything goes back to holism. Everything goes back to wholeness, all right? This, all right. Is, this is the monomyth. This is the monomyth. And we're going to see it reflected in the story, the Black Panther, in the Black Panther ep epic. We got a lot of people complaining on Facebook and social media. Oh, why can't you... Just let us enjoy the movie. Why can't we just enjoy seeing black people? You you understand in 
in in these glorious and elegant positions and as Superman, it's all right if you do that. I enjoyed the movie from that standpoint. But I got another eye that is healthy and that can see. Can't help that. So I can enjoy it for, for a while. But I also can't help but seeing. So this is not reading anything into it. This is actually what it is. And you all will see that all of these movies are based on basic fundamentals that they operate on. So let's go to Genesis, the 25th chapter. Verses 21 through 26. And Isaac entreated the Lord, his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The children struggled together within her. So it was two children, twins, struggling together within, within her. That word struggle is the Hebrew word ratzatz, ratzatz. And that word means to try to oppress and crush and kill one another and destroy one another. It's the word ratsats. So this is indicative of the struggle, the controversy, the enmity between these two genetically distinct types. When we say genetically distinct, and Nasik and myself have been uh, emphasizing this, that when we say genetically distinct, do not automatically think in terms of black and white mm -hmm. or skin tone at all. You're going to miss it. The Caucasoid, the mm -hmm. average man, is a recent phenomenon, last six, seven, eight thousand years. Are you all with me? Okay. Not an opinion. That is a science. That is the science of it. That is the true history of it. Last, within the last eight thousand years, there was nothing called a white man before that. As we as we know it now all right so and the lord said unto her two nations now keep in mind two nations plural that is dual are in thy womb two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels and the one people shall be stronger than the other genetically stronger when you look at that word and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days were to be, lit, to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, twins in her womb. Now we're going to fast forward. And we're going to look at another symbol of the divine feminine in the end times. Are you all with me? Okay. So you have at the at the beginning twins and what controversy, enmity, struggle, dualism, the dynamic what interaction and interplay between two diametrically opposed things, two distinct genetic types. We fast forward to Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, what? A woman clothed with the sun. Again, a representation of the divine feminine. And the moon under her feet and, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she, like Rebecca, being with child, now this time singular, one child 
cry travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was what? Like Rebecca, ready to be delivered, to devour the child, singular, not twins anymore, but one mm -hmm. holistic, mm -hmm. singular child as soon as it was born. And mm -hmm. she was brought forth, and she brought forth rather a man child who was what? To rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. We're going to take a look at the only character here that I think is necessary to take a look at when you're talking about the movie, The Black Panther. Because people, this Eric Stevens, Killmonger, represents all of us on this call. Yes, I'm going absolutely. To absolutely, yep. In every way, Killmonger represents all of us on this call. Mm -hmm. What did the American government recently do, the, the FBI? They targeted black identity groups. In other words, groups that would what? Be tracing out their original history. Because like the Willie Lynch letter says that they did this reversal mentally, shaved us of our mental what? History. But it said that the mind has, has a, a powerful uh, corrective aspect to it, that if it can touch an original historic what? Item, something that it would automatically reverse what it is that we, so they've had to outlaw that. They villainized that. Black identity groups. Am I correct? Everybody know that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to understand that this character Killmonger was, was, was the one that was really in touch with what? His true history. Mm -hmm. Demonstrated it throughout the whole movie. A mm -hmm. keen knowledge and understanding of his history. We in America, we must understand this. We in America are the only ones that can have that genuine perspective of our true entire history, especially mm -hmm. those of, of our generation. Those of us on this call, we were represented in the movie by, by the villain. Always you're gonna be represented by the villain, as the villain. But he was mm -hmm. actually the hero of the movie, or he could have been. Right. All right. Once we take a look at stereotyping, all of this thing is, is gonna make, make sense. So here is the the uh, the dialogue. T'Challa asks him when he appears in Wakanda, what do you want? Killmonger, I want the throne. Well, that is our destiny of the one child. We're going to see that he represents the one child, singular. She brought forth what? A man child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. In other cultures, they refer to that individual as the golden child. The golden child. If you all remember, Eddie Murphy was in that right. movie, The Golden Child. Mm -hmm. And they did the usual reverse ritual substitution of a little what? Mongoloid boy. Mm -hmm. That was the golden child that had all of the magic powers. And Eddie Murphy was just what? In a servant's role. Right. Assisting, assisting him. 
This is a stereotype that is repeated over and over and over and over again in these movies. And especially as it at, when they feature melanated people. If it's going to make it to the screen, understand that it's not going to make it in a pure form. It is going to be, it is going to appear as such, but it's going to be poison, what? In the pot. Spiritual energetic poison. And this is what they did with the uh with the caricature or the character Killmonger. T'Challa in the movie, I want you all to see this. T'Challa represents, do you see the form of that word? T-C-H. Everybody mm -hmm. see the form of that word? See, you must be familiar with Freudian philosophy, Jungian philosophy. That is our knowledge. Freud called the ego das ik, das ik, or das ich, if you want to say it like that. So tch is ich, tch is ich. T'Challa represented the ego. that which guards, protects, and maintains the status quo. Throughout the whole movie, he was saying what? That is not our way. That is not the tradition mm -hmm. of the fathers. Mm -hmm. The ego okay. will always protect the status quo, that which has been, and it will resist what? Change. And the evolutionary movement to the next cycle. Eric Stevens, ES, <clears throat> represented what Freud called Das Is, or the id, the divine essence, all right? We, we had gone over this before, and we're going to go over it again. Because we must familiarize ourselves with these basic aspects of humanity if we're going to really understand anything, uh, you know, to the degree that is necessary. So... He represented the id, das es, the divine essence. That's where we get the word essence. I believe it was uh, uh, Aknazar said that you, when you look at these movies, you got to look at for the things, family, that you don't see. You have to look at the things that you don't see. And when we look at the character Killmonger, in the, in the biblical story, we see the woman giving birth to him. In the story, we see that just like in the Osirian tale, just like in the tale of Adon, uh, uh, Cain and Abel, just like in the tale of Esau and Jacob, that the one brother, what, rose up, that's T'Challa's father, and killed his brother. That is the Osirian mm -hmm. tale. But what you didn't see, you saw the little boy out there playing basketball, right, in the project. Mm -hmm. But what you mm -hmm. didn't see and what they did not mention was his mother. You never saw his mm -hmm. mother. They mentioned her, but you never saw her. This mm -hmm. is the hidden divine feminine mm -hmm. that is represented in his name. 
Killmonger. Which, rep which corresponds to Kalima, Kilma, Kalima. You must pay attention to language. And then the word at the end, N-G-E-R, Niger or nigger, meaning black. Y'all got to see that. Mm-hmm. When you do the etymology or you do, you look at the definition of monger, they're going to give you fishmonger, right? They're going to give you the word fishmonger, one that sells fishes, right? The fish refers to what? The noon, the divine feminine, the yoni. That what? Gives birth to the male child. Everybody with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Another thing that the people that have not been on this call will totally miss is the scarification on right. Kim Ponger's body. We've already mm -hmm. gone through that. Now, see, he represents the healed man, the mm -hmm. whole man. Uh-huh. The one that through extension of this ancient ritual, uh, corrective and healing ritual of scarification, ritual scarification, and again, the actual real-time ritual that our parents went through, when they were scarified and branded, that was an alchemical process. See, people are trying to understand and decode this movie, but they don't have the tools. Killmonger represents us. Mm -hmm. Let me ask y'all, are, are, are we showing the benefits of that repaired recessive trait? I'm asking a question. Are we showing those the benefits of being healed and whole? Okay, we are right now. Absolutely, we are. Mm -hmm. But those individuals that do not have this knowledge, this complete, full, and accurate history of our people, ain't no way, Nasi, that they can make these connections. There's no way. Absolutely not. This thing just appears on the screen. They look at us, and I saw one comment that said, well, and, and I guess this was supposed to be a conscious comment. Well, who taught him to hate his skin? Okay. Yeah, you're completely missing it, right? Completely missing it. He don't hate his skin. He hates the flaw and understands that the skin, being the largest uh, pigmented organ, that mm -hmm. that is where the ritual had to be performed. And it mm -hmm. had to be performed, people, in real time. Right. We are the beneficiaries of that. Because now, family, we can what? Activate that melanin to the fullest extent of the power that is innate in that. Makes sense. Okay. Okay, so Killmonger, this is actually what they were saying, that that he was born of what? The divine feminine. You never saw his mother. She was the hidden divine feminine, just like they hide it in the scriptures, just like the patriarchal society keeps it hidden in in all talk of things, so-called sacred and holy. Oh, he said that. All right. 
So this is a result. Killmonger represented the result of the holistic birth or the birth of the oh. holistic healed child in Revelations 12. Couldn't be clearer. And on his body, he showed the evidence of that. And he said, and this talks about the uniqueness of the individuals that come that have come out of this experience in the Americas. He explained that, look, each of these marks stands for a person that I've killed to get to this throne, to get back home. He said, I've killed people on this continent as well as America, my own people, to get here. We have a unique perspective and, a, and, and an ability, listen, to manifest an energy that eyes has not seen, that is unimaginable because we are the direct heirs, the direct beneficiaries of this ritualistic, um, this real-time ritual, uh, ritual that was performed on our behalf by our beloved ancestors. What we haven't understood and what we need to conceptualize is the fact of our divine nature. And again, quite possibly, the majority of us have understood it intellectually. Because if you read Psalms 82, you read Jesus, I and the Father are one. But to realize and to acknowledge and to begin to identify with our divinity more than we do our humanity is very problematic. And it's, it's because of our entrainment. It's because of the programming that we've been bombarded with. And Malkiel, it's because we have been stripped of a, an, a true and accurate understanding of our divine history and heritage. Mm -hmm. Many people struggle with the idea still of emanation. And we cling to this concept of us being created beings. We don't have this straightened out in our mind, so it makes it very difficult to what? Reconnect with our source, our higher selves, the divine aspect of our being. And we might, um, we might give lip service to it, and we might have an intellectual comprehension of the fact of our divinity, but we have not realized it yet, quite yet. And again, we know that this is a process, but we must begin to do it if we are going to uh, genuinely manifest this power after we have connected to or reconnected with our divinity. Psalms 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. And that word, the mighty, is Elohim, of the gods. He judges among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? We're going to get into it and break this down. Selah, think about that. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. In the movie, who was trying to do that? But Killmonger. 
He said, we need these weapons to get the oppressor up off of us. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all sitting up here comfortable. That's what mm -hmm. he said. He said, y'all. Isn't that what his father was saying? Pardon me? That's what his father was about. Isn't that what his father was saying? Right. His when father he got killed for Right. His father represented Osiris. And the king represented Set. Set on. Are you all hearing me? The mm -hmm. adversary that killed his brother. And Killmonger represented Heru, the hero that was going to what? Come to avenge his father's death and continue his work. That is the Jesus narrative, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is everything that we, that, that we know about a hero. That is the monomyth. So he was the one that fit the description, at least in Psalms 82, of the gods. And, you know, I, I loved it when he when he was like, you know, y'all sitting up here comfortable, sitting on all this power, that if you release it to the world, our people could be what? Free, liberate. Free. With, yes. They don't need no defender. They can defend mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So this was the thing, people. This was the ritual that they were putting forth to us. And we're going to get into understanding what stereotyping in this ritual is. See, we must know ourselves. We must know ourselves and our true history before we know anything else. Moving on. Let us look at this term stereotype. Stereotype. <clears throat> because this is a foundational concept to imagery, to images. What was the commandment in the Bible that had to do with making images? Uh, is that the third commandment? I am the Lord thy Yah, thou shalt not have any graven, any images before me. We're getting ready well, to talk about of it. these images that were specifically talked about. This is stereotyping. This is stereotyping. Are you all with me? Okay. So a stereotype is a method of printing from a plate. Stereos meaning solid and type meaning a solid type or an immovable type an inflexible type all right and the the that is the literal meaning the figurative meaning is an image perpetuated without change very powerful juju very powerful formula there, and it is basic. Let me ask you all that have grown up in my generation, have you noticed in terms of television, print media, and motion pictures, et cetera, that we play certain types, mm -hmm. all right? Absolutely. <laughs> we, we the females, y'all either play Jezebel or the Mammy. Mm -hmm. Brothers play coons, buffoons, right? The comic, pimps. the comic relief pimps. Always Thank scared. You. They are definitely, and we'll go into those basic types at another date, but we can all agree that, they, that these things are perpetuated without change. This term was first recorded in 1850. Got to pay attention to these dates. 
What happened 14 years later? 1864. The, the free, uh, emancipation. There you go. There you go. There you but go. you know what? I had a question about that. That was a proclamation, and you hear proclamations all the time. It was not put into law. It, it was. It, it wasn't right? law. Wasn't law. We remain the same. We just went from an mm -hmm. agrarian society where we worked on a plantation to a uh, industrial society when we worked at where we worked in a plant. We went from the plantation to a plant. Mm -hmm. Olfactory. Absolutely. So in 1850, it was uh, uh, from a verb sense now, went from a, no uh, a noun sense to a verb sense, meaning preconceived and oversimplified notion of characteristics typical of a person or group. That came about in 1922. So all we have to do is think about where we were in 1850, what happened in the interim, and lay it up to 1922. All right. You have you have the so-called end of chattel slavery in America in 1864, 1865. It was ratified by the Congress. Then you have Reconstruction, and then 1922 puts us right into the Jim Crow period. Correct. Okay. Something conformed to a fixed or general pattern. See, that is what the ego wants to do, right? It wants to maintain what? The status quo, the fixed pattern. Don't want to change. Don't ever want to change. Don't ever want to adapt. Just keep things mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. in Into the status quo. The word type is the word symbol or emblem. And you all remember, we went over uh, Psalm 74, where it talked about, we see not our signs. We see not our symbol. That is because these things were changed for a very specific pur purpose to keep us, to keep us what? Locked into a particular cycle or a particular pattern or a particular type. Everybody with me? Is it making sense? At least. Okay. Yeah. All right. When you look at the synonyms for the word ritual, this is how I'm connecting it. The synonyms are formula, pattern a fixed pattern and the word stereotype. Stereotype is a ritual, people. It is a ritual. Gotcha. There is not a Caucasoid on this planet that ever developed a ritual. All mm -hmm. rituals are have been developed by our people and they are powerfully effective, mm -hmm. powerfully effective. And it just doesn't have to do with your self-image or your view of yourself. It is going, a stereotype is designed to lock, it's a ritual, a formula designed to lock you into one specific mental state, one specific behavioral uh, behavior, and one specific behavioral pattern where you will what? never rise up, never produce right. one thing. And since the begin, the, uh, again, since the beginning of imaging, especially on the part of the Caucasoid, I'm saying specifically on this part, we were stereotyped. We were mm -hmm. stereotyped. 
when they invented the camera, the first thing they did was focus on the divine feminine, the melanated feminine, our mothers and daughters, and lock them into a specific pattern. Mm -hmm. This is powerful medicine as our uh, North American forefathers would say. Powerful juju. Ita. Uh-huh. Could also be said that the uh, the Willie Lynch process is part of that? Oh, yeah. That that was the whole ritual. Right. That was the whole ritual, mm -hmm. remember, that our, mm -hmm. that our forefathers went through. Mm -hmm. And it was based, what, on our knowledge of ritual scarification and yes. branding. It was based on that cultural ritual. So yeah, exactly, exactly correct. So all of this stuff ties in to what we've already learned. Now we get into hypnosis, all right? And I'll just tell you that a theater is the perfect place to put you in a hypnotic state. <laughs> You, you go to, if, 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 you, if you went to a practitioner, they would dim the lights, all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they use sound and light to hypnotize you, all right? To put you in what is called a subjective state to subliminally, what? Preach into your subconscious. And the subconscious is the id. It is the id. And we're going to see this ritual, what they did in the movie with Killmonger, that that symbol, whether you know it or not, that symbol, you're familiar with it. I have a question. Okay. Go right ahead. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, wouldn't that also, Shalom, Shalom, this is Yitzhiba, wouldn't that also be like a connection with Henrietta Lacks, the uh, the African woman whose cells that they continuously use, cancer cells? That That's correct. They've been well, using since the 1950s? Yes, it would be uh, indirectly connected to that, but yes, definitely connected to it definitely connected to it just because they have her listed as having um immortalized cells they call her and then she has an immortalized cell line that's correct that's correct and yes that that in it it, it definitely connects but indirectly we're we're, we're there's a spiritual aspect to the makeup of all of us of melanated individuals and that is a direct uh, connection to that, but in a slightly different way. In a slightly different way, but it, it definitely is connected. So what is hypnosis? As, as defined by Wikipedia, hypnosis is a wakeful state of focused attention. I'm gonna stop right there. What do we know about attention? The attention goes, energy flows. Absolutely. So it's getting you to focus your attention and have energy flow out of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. And heightened suggestibility. So whatever is being preached while you're in that state, you are taking it in and absorbing absorbing it when you're at what? A, dis a distracted state of attention where your energy is flowing. You don't know where. So you are at a, a, an energetically depleted condition and they are what? Suggesting things to you. Mm -hmm. And understand with this movie, as well as many others, these suggestions are not going to be beneficial to you in terms of your elevation in consciousness.
a wakeful state of focused attention and heightened suggestibility with a diminished peripheral awareness. So it diminishes your awareness. While in this state, messages can reach the subconscious, reprogramming certain aspects of your mindset. I don't think I have to say any more about that. So moving on. Again, we're talking about this ritual and it is its effectiveness. There is a new technology. Well, let me talk about subliminal stimuli. Subliminal because this has everything to do with the movies and in the atmosphere that they put you in in the movies. We we were uh we went to a show where they were they 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 had it was a theater that was bigger, bigger screen, louder uh um speakers and stuff like that, all of the science, latest scientific technology that they call XD. And they have a separate showing of the movie and we chose to, to, to look at it there. So, but this has to do with this subliminal stimuli. Subliminal means below the threshold, below the threshold. Contrary to supraliminal stimuli or above the threshold are any sensory are any sensory stimuli below an individual's threshold or uh, for conscious perception did you all hear that below the individual's threshold for conscious perception so when you go to these movies and what i did what my daughter did, we, we talked all the way prior to the movie. And I let her know, like I'm letting some of you know, what it is that she was going to see. So that what? She would engage her conscious awareness. Are you all with me? Okay. If your conscious awareness is not engaged, then whatever messages that was in the presentation that was targeted at your subconscious, it is going to find those seeds are going to find good ground there. This is not sim simply about entertainment and what you like or what you don't like. This is about science and it is about our alchemical science being what? Turned around and used against us. There's no excuse. I mean, we have this knowledge. There's no excuse for us to what? Ignore this and continue to suffer uh, at the hands of people that mean us no good. Right. So the, these are sensory stimuli that are below an individual's threshold for conscious perception. A recent review of functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, suggests a study show that subliminal stimuli activate specific regions of the brain despite participants being unaware. Don't matter if you if 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 you know that you're unaware, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Because what? They've observed people's, they've, they've done this imaging, show people these, these images or, or this film or these symbols, and they know directly what regions of the brain they affect. You all hear me? Akita. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely clear because that, that, you sharing that put me straight in the mind of the cell phone. That's correct. Because um, there was a um, a sixty minute piece, and they had actual coders who went to school 
to learn the functioning of the brain to write co specific code to stimuli the brain using apps on the cell phone. That's correct. We better know it. We mm -hmm. better know it. And mm -hmm. I'm not advocating. I'm not av advocating not using cell phones. Right. Right. I'm not advocating not going to movies. Right. But go to movies armed with your power and your awareness. Yes. We're supposed to be decoding this these things. Yes. Visual stimuli may be quickly flashed before an individual can process them or flashed and then masked, thereby interrupting the process. Audio stimuli may be played below audible volumes or masked by other stimuli. Understand this and know it. This is what they're doing. This is exactly what they're doing. There is a new technique called neurocinema. It's a new filmmaking process. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Neurocinema is a new mm -hmm. filmmaking process that studies a viewer's sensory motor, cognitive, and effective response to what? Film stimuli. Don't matter if it's Black Panther. Right. Don't matter if it's something that they package and wrapped up in a package that you that that is attractive to you it is still at its essence film stimuli mm -hmm. researchers use technologies such as again functional magnetic resonance imaging fmri to measure changes in activity in parts of the brain EEG to measure activity in specific region spectra of brain response and or sensors to measure changes in one's what? Brain. Physiological state, heart rate, respiratory rate, galvanic skin response. Why do you think are they measuring it in, in your skin? Black folks, melanated people, you melanated men and women, because mm -hmm. th that is the largest organ mm -hmm. on your body. Mm -hmm. And they are targeting melanin. They told you during the film, the little science girl, his sister, when, 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 when the white boy asked about the trains, the right. going through and it's, she said they they run on melon you know they run on vibrantium mm -hmm. which is melanin melanin yes and they said and she said but the train they will go too fast so we have to affect it with what sound mm -hmm. just told the dude the 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 secret mm -hmm. to what adversely affecting melanin or vibrantium just told a, a CIA agent that just came out of my, I was like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> they are really, they are really working this. Right. To learn exactly what scenes excite or disinterest a viewer. You don't think that they did that to create this excitement for Black Panther as they did the, the, the trailer that they had people s sitting in a room wired up, Black folks? Mm-hmm to know exactly what would get you excited about this film, we better we better grow up. We better grow up. The game is check chess, not checkers. Come on, Ita. A lot of a lot of us are interested in just being entertained. Entertained, yes. This is high science going on here and this is our science what? Being turned back around on us used as what a reverse ritual. Social engineering is a discipline of social science that refers to efforts to influence particular attitudes and social behaviors on a large scale, whether by governments, 
media or private groups in order to produce a desired characteristic in whom? A target population. Keep thinking that it's just a film to be enjoyed if you want to. These sciences and technologies are all present. In the, in, in the producing of a film or filmmaking. Ignore it if you want to, mm -hmm. but these are the facts. These are the facts. And if it's killing your entertainment buzz, so be it. Right. So be it. I'm mm -hmm. going to inform my people. I'm yeah, going to exactly. inform my people as to what's been going on so they can forearm themselves. And you can really yeah. enjoy it. And you can mm -hmm. do what? Do what I did. Flip the ritual. Exactly. Flip the ritual. So I get the entire benefit of all mm -hmm. that energy, all that mm -hmm. information, all that energy that is flowing mm -hmm. into Black Panther now. I'm mm -hmm. tapping it back out. I'm reserving right. mine and tapping back into this phenomenon. It, it has a life of its own now. But if you do not know how to tap into that energy, guess what? If you don't know how to use it, it's going to use you. Etai, what 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 you are basically do, doing is what the Black Panther um, whole suit is all about is, is absorbing energy for redistribution. Bruh, because that's my melanin is activated. I know exactly, that. exactly. So, so okay. when they hit me with a blow, what I absorb. <laughs> And do what? Right. Use it like I want to use it. Exactly. We about to see who. You know, we, we about to see who. You know what this is about. reminding me of? Uh, Something in the military that um, when when I was uh, in the Air Force and I used to get into places I think that I wasn't supposed to be, but they were talking about this is on a chemical warfare and there were certain uh, chemicals that they had that would target a, a certain genetic group. That's correct. And I'm, th this is like tying into that because I'm always like, you know, the chemtrails and going through that. And I'm saying, okay, this is over my neighborhood. What them three helicopters doing up there? You know, just being aware right. of your surroundings and what's going on on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, this I, is I, I'll tell, all tied I'll tell you in. what, let, let me give you a secret. You activate if when we activate our melanin and, and tap into this dark energy matter like we're supposed to, we don't we don't have to worry about what they're doing. They're gonna be exactly about, they're gonna be more worried about what we're about what doing. We doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey Markiel, I got <laughs> we gotta tighten mm -hmm. this tighten this up. <laughs> All right. Now let us look. Uh, let's finish this thing out by neurocinematics. This article describes a new method of accessing the effect of, of a given film on viewers' brain activity. So y'all think they didn't do this with Black Panther and all this money this, this film is making. <laughs> they anticipated it. Since you just said that they target what certain certain target groups, mm -hmm. so we knew that. I mean, they knew when they made this and 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 they greenlit it that it was going to be a black movie, correct? Mm -hmm. So for us, y'all telling me for us, they 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 gonna forgo all this science. They they just not right. gonna use it in that film. Right. That's what you're trying <laughs> to tell me. <laughs> Come on, we need to grow up now. We need to yes, grow sir. up and stop wanting to be only entertained. Right. I'm entertained when I when I, when I have knowledge. I do not mm -hmm. like to be in any situation where I'm not knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. I'm entertained by what? Gathering knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's what I see told you. That's what I'm entertained at, in. In anything that I've ever Damn. been involved in. My father told me before you get into anything Know the game that you're playing. Mm 
no matter what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And this thing has saved my life. I always know before I get into something, I always know about it from A to Z. Mm -hmm. And that don't spoil the fun of it for me. It makes it more fun mm -hmm. because I know I'm at exactly where I'm at and what I'm doing at any given time. But like the Bible say, fools hate knowledge. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not one of them fools. Brain mm -hmm. activity was measured using again fMRI during free viewing of films. During what? free viewing of film. Do you think that they allow control groups of African Americans to come in and get a preview, a free pre preview of Black Panther? Yeah, they hyped it up. And, and what? We volunteered for it. Came in there with no knowledge. And they got all this technology going. All we can come out and say, ooh, they, you know, they got a bunch of Black actors in the movie. Wow. Right. Isn't that impressive? And don't mm -hmm. know that the free viewing was what? To examine you, to test you, mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. what, how your brain functions, to mm -hmm. what? Specific audio, visual stimuli, and imaging, and intersubject correlation analysis was used to assess similarities in the spatio temporal responses across viewers brain during the watching of the movie but of course you uh, uh, individuals that they, they don't know nothing don't want to know nothing and this stuff is not affecting them our results demonstrate that some films can exert considerable control over what brain activity and eye movements. Y'all ever heard of REM? Rapid eye movement. Mm -hmm. That is when you are really asleep. Sleep. In mm -hmm. a deep sleep. Deep. And yep. we talked, and I see talk to you all about this deep sleep. Deep sleep, yes. Our Dema. We're going to look at the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew uh, 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 13. And not in this class, but if, uh, uh, because I want, I want to come off of what uh, Nasik talked about. And when they said, when, when the wheat, they, they, in, in the field of the wheat, they planted all wheat. And they looked up, Malkia, and what, what came up was tares, what? Mm -hmm. In the wheat field. Mm -hmm. And they say, how is this done? And the parable says, while we slept. Slept, yes. A substitute was brought to bear. So all of this stuff, all of this science is viable. You know, we see it when we take, as we've done, a closer look at uh, cinematography and film. Now we're going to take a look at the cartoons and just see a few basics of this. So a cartoon and cartoon animation. All right. Cartoon and cartoon animation. This was developed in the 1670s. Is that within our time period and time frame? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A drawing on a strong on, on strong paper used as a model for another work from French carton or carton, strong, heavy paper. Now you remember the type, it was metal. So what this is talking about, again, metaphorically, or uh, figuratively, is a fixed image. Are you all with me? A fixed image.
moving forward. The reason why the Killmonger character is so significant is because he comes from and represents the West. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important element in yes. monomyth because everything our ancestors told us that everything is going to wrap up in the West. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense. Mm -hmm. and it was set into motion in the Genesis, where it said the evening, darkness, night first, and the morning, uh, light follows darkness, was the first day. Mm -hmm. The word darkness is the word erev, erev, and it means dusk or sunset or look. Mm -hmm. Sunset, S O N. Uh, uh -huh. Sunset. Mm -hmm. This is S O N. The sunset is the operative phrase. The S O N, the sun, the Heru or the hero, the son of the slain father in the Osirian myth or the Osirian tale is Heru. Set was the one that killed him, that killed his father. Mm -hmm. And Set, meaning the position that the sun set, the sun rises in the east and sets where? In the west. In the west. west. So this thing, now see, is going to wrap up in the west. The sun was born where? In the West. The singular sun was born in the West, not in the East. Mm -hmm. Has a connection to the East, but was not born there. And that was Killmonger, born in the mm -hmm. project. His father there right. doing, doing work, revolutionary work. and had compassion for the people. He came, mm -hmm. he came from uh, Wakanda, you know, just like his brother did. Mm -hmm. But his brother had little or no compassion to what was happening to melanated people in general. And his father set in motion what extended to his son. We got to pay attention now to our mics being open because we're getting a lot of uh, uh, please put your devices on uh, mute. We're getting a lot of interruptions. So moving forward. So this thing is going to go down and be resolved in the West. Set is the Egyptian god from the Greek. Seth, Nasi. <laughs> Remember, Abel was what? Killed by Cain, and his replacement right. was Seth. We're going to go into detail, a little yeah, bit more right. detail yeah. down the road on this. But it refers back to the Egyptian myth or the Egyptian account of Set. Now, look. He is a god of the desert, storms, representing disorder, violence, and foreigners, foreigners, migrants mm -hmm. in ancient Egypt. Set was the lord of the red desert. See, everybody in here should understand that that is what theomelanin produces. And that Esau came out looking like what? Red. A red, red hairy hair. garment. And his mm -hmm. desire was to do what? Kill Jacob. Right? Mm -hmm. 
and came the recessive older uh, type did what? Killed Abel. Set was the Lord of the Red Desert or land where he was the balance, now see, the balance to Horus as Lord of the Black Soil or land. Isn't this our story? Isn't, mm -hmm. isn't this the narrative? Yes. yes. It, it never changes because this is what the narrative, that the Bible narrative is based on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see this monomyth played out. But they do not want the son, Nasi, to succeed. Our enemy uh -huh. do not want, and you will never see them succeeding. But this is how this thing is going to play out. In the Egyptian mythology, Set is portrayed as the usurper who killed and mutilated or cut up, separated, divided. Are you all with me? His own mm -hmm. brother Horus. Horus's wife, Isis, that's the feminine energy, did what? Mm -hmm. Reassembled or remembered Horus's right. corpse and resurrected him long enough to conceive his son and heir, Horus. Horus sought revenge on Set, and the myths described their conflicts. Now, see, just like the Bible, uh, describe these conflicts between these brothers and offspring. You with me? Yeah, Itai, you know, uh, there's another story about that where the mother, I think her name was Semiramis, she was the one that reassembled uh, the hunter, uh, Nimrod. Nimrod. Right. That is right. The same, it's the same yeah. story. Same yeah. story, same it's, story, right. That's the Chaldean myth, which, right. which transferred from Kemet to Chaldea, to Babylon. And this is the land of Shinar, all right? Tower of Babel, right. all of that extends from there. And the story of Eber, where that begins, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all of this connects. We've been talking about all of this, and we're familiar with all of this. We just have to... Uh, uh, sharpen our ability and improve our ability to recognize this, and we're doing that when we see it. And but this is the same. But we saw it in Black Panther. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the point. Right. We saw it, but did we recognize it? Mm -hmm. This is what this is about. So Horus, or Heru, the son, which corresponds to whom? Killmonger represents the ancient prototype of the hero. But why they got him in the, as a villain in this film? We have to understand the science of reverse rituals, of reverse rituals. What they're trying to do is to put in our consciousness, don't even bother to what? Don't even bother to activate that melanin. Don't even right. bother to rise in conscience. You're not going to win. Right. We're going to kill you in the end. We're going to defeat you in the end. You're, you're with me. Mm -hmm. so we must yeah. have this in mind when we're thinking, when we're looking at that, that movie. We must have it not in mind, but in, in the forefront of our awareness. So Heru is represented in the book of the Revelation as this individual whose what? Face shineth like the sun. Anytime we see that term, we're they're talking about Heru, the hero. And Heru, in fact, is sometimes translated as face rather than distant one. And his face 
was what? Visualized as the face of the sun. So when we see that in the scriptures, we should know automatically that it is talking about Haru. Haru. The hero, which is based off of the word Haru, is from the late 14th century, again, within our uh, uh, broad framework. A man of superhuman strength or physical courage. Also, a, demi, a demigod, illustrious man. Illustrious meaning illuminated man. And we're not saying that we're demi demigods in the terms of what? Being half God and half human, but we know that we have one aspect that is what? Divine and the other mm -hmm. aspect that is human. Mm -hmm. the human aspect, which represents, which is represented by the ego, must die in order for the divine aspect to do what? Emerge. That is the whole caterpillar butterfly scenario mm -hmm. or symbology. But this, this demigod is the biblical narrative of the giants that were in the earth. Genesis 6. And many times we read this with not the full understanding of what is being talked about here. And we just skim through the critical verse and not really understanding what it's saying. In specific, the fourth verse of Genesis 6 said they were giants in the earth in those days. Now, does anybody know what that word giant is in Hebrew? Mm -hmm. It is the word, giants is the word Nephilim. Nephilim. And it is referring to those who descended or fell or emanated, emanated family into the earth realm. Distinguished from mere humans. We're going to talk about where this demigod notion came from. And also, listen, after that, now they are talking about a period of time now that was after the what? Divine individuals what emanated into the earth realm. So after that, after they were here, the sons of God, these are these divine emanated beings, did what? Came in unto the daughters of men and they bear children of them so that they were half what? Divine and half what? Human. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So these men of renown are the comic book characters, as well as the original giants. We're gonna find out when we look at H.P. Lovecraft that he focused on the original giants or the original titans, our ancestors in their purest form. And he called them the great old ones. He referred to them as the great old ones. H.P. Lovecraft is the individual that, that set the parameters for every scientific look, 
he set the general themes for every scientific or superhero, uh, uh, sci-fi or superhero uh, tale or epic that would be. And they are religiously followed to the letter. So if you're going to understand Black Panther or any of the other Marvel uh, characters in the Marvel mythology, you must understand H.P. Lovecraft and what he set into place. The themes included forbidden knowledge, forbidden dark or esoterically veiled knowledge. That was not only Wakanda, but it was Vibrantium. It was the whole knowledge system of the Wakandans, right? Mm -hmm. Another theme was non-human influences on humanity, the influences of the ancestors. You saw that brilliantly done in the film, where after yes. they would drink the yes. uh, flower, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, nectar of the what? Purple lotus, that mm -hmm. they would go into this trance, they would bury them in red clay, mm -hmm. in red substance. See, this is what our ancestors did in America to transfer, especially in Georgia and those places down there where they got the red clay. Have you all ever heard of them? The, the mothers, when they were in conception, eating that clay. Eating clay, yes. yes. Look, at, look at the movie, The Temptations. And when yes. you look at that film, you'll hear that... Uh, uh, not Eddie Kendricks, but uh, David Ruffin. David Ruffin said yes. they were sitting at the table eating, and he said, yes. uh, "Where I'm from in Georgia, we used to, you know, we used to eat the clay." Uh huh. You know, and they was like, "Hey, man, go ahead on." But that was a ritual that our ancestors did, especially the females when they were about to conceive, planning to conceive, or in conception. They would eat that red clay. Why? Specifically to so that their offspring would have connection with the ancestors. That is our science. That is our ritual. So, I can tell. Go ahead. Also, um, I was sharing with the family that that scene that 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 also represented astral travel. Which, oh, which we have, which we have the power to do. It's an innate yeah. ability to do, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's basic, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. the other general theme in his in in these movies, inherited guilt, inherited guilt, and you saw it because the the big secret was that what uh, T'Challa the Black Panther didn't know is his father did what? Killed his own brother. Right, right. So this aspect, of, it, it was either in the movie or it wasn't. Right. Inherited guilt. You're mm -hmm. going to see this. Fate, an individual's fate. We saw that in the movie. Civilization under threat. Mm -hmm. Race, ethnicity, and class. Come on now. Yes. Let me read, family, what he had to say about race, ethnicity, and class. See, people, you know, they on Facebook talking about y'all putting all this deep stuff into it. It's already in it. <laughs> I'm just recognizing what is in it. Right, right. My vision is not blurry. Yes. I can see these, I can't help but see them. Race is the most controversial aspect of Lovecraft's legacy. Mm -hmm. Expressed in many disparaging remarks against the various Anglo-Saxon races and cultures in his work. Anglo, uh, I'm sorry, non-Anglo-Saxon races and cultures in his work. 
you think that was not present in Black Panther. It definitely was. Yes. As he grew older, his original Anglo-Saxon racial worldwide uh, worldview rather softened into classism and elitism. You saw that in the movie. Mm -hmm. Because people are saying, how can it be racist when it was all black people in there? Well, it was transformed into classism and elitism. That was mm -hmm. the underscoring conflict in the movie between mm -hmm. who? Killmonger. Y'all mm -hmm. sitting up here real comfortable, real yes. elitist. Right. High class. Right. Doing y'all yep. thing in Rwanda. And we down there dying. Mm -hmm. Classism, elitism. See, we got to wake up now, which regarded the superior race to include all those self ennobled through what? High culture. So, y'all know what Wakanda represented. Mm -hmm. And this is the age old argument, isn't it? Look at the folks Damn. in Africa. Right. And they have this attitude toward us. We come to America and we make it, right? Y'all ain't never heard this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All this the time. the mouth of Africans. They look uh, for, you know, many of them, they look down on us. We come to America and have successful, why y'all been there for, why, why can't y'all do it? Classism, yeah. elitism. Yeah. We've what? Yeah. Ennobled ourselves through our self-effort. From the start, Lovecraft did not hold all white people in uniform high regard, but rather, listen, esteemed English people and those of English descent. This is why, family, you will always see when it's an ancient movie the people, no matter what culture, will speak with an English accent. Mm -hmm. Go back and look at the old biblical movies. They are speaking with an English accent. The big hero that they pushed on the American people, the, the absolute icon of the 60s was whom? James Bond. Bond. That was the new cool. Until right. something else came came along. Shaft. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> this cat shaft is a bad shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> that became the new cool. Yes. Yes. But these films were what? Produced, written, controlled. They call them black exploitation films. Mm -hmm. But that was our image. Fully blown, fully blown. He praised non-WASP groups such as Hispanics and Jews. However, his private writings on groups such as Irish, Cath Irish Catholics, German immigrants, and African Americans were consistently negative. Mm. In an early doggerel poem, the 1912, uh, from 1912, on the creation of niggers. Mm. This is what's behind Black Panther. Lovecraft describes Africans not as humans, but beasts in semi-human figure, filled with vice. While his racist perspective is undeniable, many critics argue this is irrelevant to the compelling mythos of his philosophical world. And, uh, and, and this is what most black people are saying on social media. Oh, y'all bringing all this stuff out is irrelevant. It was a beautiful film. It's uplifting black people. Is it really? In what way? Mm-hmm. And just showing us dressed up in nice costumes and flipping around on stage? Or is it the subtext to it that you are completely missing? 
Mm -hmm. We're looking at the subset. Also, religion is another thing. One of the, you know, and when we saw all of that in there. One of the, uh, the I mean, the, uh, his, his, his stories, and I'll just read, they were based on these figures called the great old ones. And these individuals, uh, family, are our ancient, ancient, ancient ancestors. Not, yes. see, not called gods, called titans. Right. Called mm. titans. All right. And these are our ancestors in a form that we would not readily recognize. They are not. See, we think that everything exists, uh, existed like it exists now. No, these great old ones now see was something different. Very damn clear. So. An ongoing theme in H.P. Lovecraft's work is the complete irrelevance of mankind. I'm going to repeat that. Is the complete irrelevance of mankind, what? In the face of cosmic horrors. We are those cosmic horrors. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. That apparently exist in the universe with Lovecraft constantly referring referring to the great old ones, a loose pantheon of ancient, powerful deities from what? From space who once ruled the earth and have since fallen, Nasi, into a death-like sleep. I'm going to end right there. Wow. Who are you wow. Think you're talking about? Come on. Come on. Come on, Ita. No, oh, man, man, man. So they That's still so mean, Nasi. These individuals want to want me to lay off Black Panther, but right. what I see is they talking about my ancestors and they mm -hmm. tossing them out to my face. I'm not going to let that stand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to straighten it out and inform our people what the real deal is and what energy, not no film, the right. energy that underlies the film. Right. That we need I mean, to tap into in a correct right manner. They have vilified our ancestors through this process. So I'm not picking on the film. I'm pointing the people in the direct in, into this man's direction. This the one cussing you your ancestors out to your face. Hmm. Malky, I'm not gonna let that. I'm not gonna let that happen. No, you, you're not supposed to. Look, anybody is free to do what it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. But I know who my ancestors are. I know right. what they are. Mm -hmm. Abba always talked about Nasi that. Before he spoke, yes, he yes. said he talked about what vindicating mm -hmm. our ancestors. I take that personally. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I take that personally as he did. And so, if if when I recognize it, is 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 and and when we recognize it, it's our job to straighten it out. First of all, in in our mental awareness mm -hmm. and understand exactly what we're seeing. And when I put up on Facebook yesterday that Black Panther was the age old white supremacist thematic uh, treatise wrapped in uh Black pride, pseudo scientific wrappings. 
it, it it's designed. It they they got to wrap it up like that to make it appeal to you. What? So, mm-hmm. so that we can go into the theater and they can preach into our subconscious. So all of these characters, all of these characters, the Hulk, Spider-Man, uh, you name it. They are based on our ancestors. When we, when, when our ancient ancestors, what? Rule this planet. Mm-hmm. And so when we recognize this family, it is very easy to decode these films mm-hmm. and, to, and to translate them into their uh, proper conception and then tap into that energy that is in there. The vast yes. majority of the people, you know, and I'll say this, that when you go to see it and you do not have this mental awareness and mental conception, they are tapping into you and mm-hmm. misappropriating and innervating your energy. They are misappropriating mm-hmm. it, just like you went in there and offered your neck to a vampire. They are stealing energy from you and reprogramming you or keeping you pro keeping you on this locking you rather tighter into the program that you're already locked into so we can't have that we can't have that again tremendously uh good presentation in terms of uh the cinematography uh the cinematography in terms of the uh, positive images that they that they put ourselves in that were what consistent with our heritage and our history. But again, now I see I'm not gonna let that fool me. <laughs> no, we can't um, yeah. can't allow that to happen. So with that, I'm going to end this particular portion here. Uh, we'll readdress some of these things. Uh, as necessary, but that's the basic science, you know, behind cartoons and uh, moving pictures and images. You know, uh, later on, we're going to get into the birth of the nation and certain other films where, uh, you know, they've taken these, this, this uh, underlying theme of the great old ones, our ancestors, and they've worked a ritual. They've worked a ritual. It it happens consistently. It happens all the time in the world of Hollywood and movie making and filmmaking and even the things that are on television. So we mm-hmm. we, we we must uh, uh, raise our awareness to this and uh, you know do what it takes you know to be that vibrantium you know and absorb the energy, absorb the blow and redirect that energy for our benefit. So with that, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say wholeness and end right here.